This video is made possible because of one particular rare metal. It is absolutely essential for the manufacturing of lithium ion batteries. And unfortunately, this element is mined in some of the worst conflict zones on the planet. Most of the world's production comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now it's been decades, but we have not been able to find a replacement for this metal in lithium ion batteries that are used in every smartphone, laptop and solar power plants because it's the thermal stability of this element that prevents your lithium ion battery from catching fire, something that has happened quite a few times. So you might be wondering what all of this has to do with food and nutrition. The name of this metal is cobalt. And just like how it is critical to lithium ion batteries and despite how hard it is to mine in places like Congo, we have no choice but to use it. Would it blow your mind if I told you that cobalt plays a similar, extremely crucial role in every form of life that is not a plant. All animals require cobalt for a very simple reason. It is crucial in an enzyme that is central to the production of DNA, fatty acids and amino acids. In short, absolutely critical for life. This molecule is called cobalamine, also known as vitamin B12. So the question is, why would life become so dependent on such a rare metal? And why don't animals produce it in their body if it was that important? To understand this, we have to go back and think about how evolution works. All of us descended from simpler mammals and those descended from fish. And, and those fish came from single-celled bacteria ultimately. And what is astonishing is that going back almost 2.7 billion years, no life form has been able to synthesize vitamin B12. As far back as the first eukaryotic cell, animal life depended on eating something that produced or had vitamin B12 inside itself to get its own supply. The reason it turns out is that making vitamin B12 is one of biology's most complex processes. It has over 30 steps and is very energy intensive. So this is where evolution comes in. In any generation, the easier, more convenient path is more likely to succeed. It's like this. Given the choice between working really hard to earn money and stealing money, evolution will likely select stealing money. So as far back as 2.7 billion years ago, single-celled bacteria were like, this is too difficult. I am just going to eat someone who has vitamin B12. And since then, every animal has simply opted to get it from food, with the rather important exception of plants. Plants evolved a completely different biochemical pathway to manage DNA, fatty acid and protein synthesis. So they do not depend on cobalt and vitamin B12 to do this. This is an important and relevant fact to remember later in this video. That brings us to what happens if you are deficient in vitamin B12. Because it is essential for DNA and RNA synthesis, any biological function that requires lots of new cells to be made all the time, like red blood cells, will not function properly. And you will also experience neurological problems, constant fatigue, and in extreme cases, heart problems. And because your liver stores vitamin B12 for three to five years, you will not see symptoms for one to two years if your diet is deficient. Which brings us to a more basic question. Does the typical Indian diet give you enough vitamin B12? And the shocking answer is a big no. Multiple studies have shown that almost 47%, almost half of the Indian population is vitamin B12 deficient. And if you consider borderline deficient, it's almost 74% deficient. To understand why, remember our 2.7 billion year old story. Animals cannot produce vitamin B12 and plants don't produce it at all. So you can only get vitamin B12 from animal sources. And because per capita meat consumption is very low in India, it is not surprising that vitamin B12 deficiency is exceedingly 
common. A logical question to ask. If you can only get vitamin B12 from animal sources, how do cows, elephants, rhinos and other herbivores deal with this problem. They have managed to form a symbiotic relationship with a specific gut bacteria that only lives inside herbivore stomachs and produces vitamin B12. And how did that bacteria get into their digestive system? When the cow eats grass, there are bits of soil stuck to it. And this bacteria comes from the soil. So you might ask, we have gut bacteria too. So can't they make it? Unfortunately, no. In our guts, the bacteria that can make this is too far down the colon, so we don't absorb it. So how do you ensure that you get enough vitamin B12 in your diet? You need 2.4 micrograms per day. This is a very, very small amount. This is the list of vitamin B12 rich foods. Top tier. Number one, red meat, beef, mutton, pork particularly liver because that is where vitamin B12 is stored. One serving will give you way more than your daily requirement. Two, seafood. Also a very rich source of vitamin B12. Bottom tier, chicken, milk and eggs. These also have some vitamin B12. But remember, you will have to eat almost one kg of chicken or four cups of milk or a dozen eggs to get your daily requirement of vitamin B12. So these cannot be your primary sources. So in reality, unless you eat red meat or seafood, getting all your vitamin B12 from an Indian diet is not easy. Barring people who live on the coast that eat fish daily and people in the mountains that eat red meat more regularly. Which brings us to the second source, fortified foods. Incidentally, breakfast cereals, nutritional yeast, etc. tend to be fortified with vitamin B12. In fact, Americans mostly get their B12 not from meat, but from breakfast cereals. But of course, they come with a lot of sugar. Which brings us to the third source, supplements. Now, now before you start eating supplements, go get tested. And if you are deficient and your cultural diet cannot accommodate enough vitamin B12, your doctor can prescribe you supplements. A particular thing to note, vegan diets are at very high risk of vitamin B12 deficiency because they do not include any animal-based foods, meat, eggs, or milk products. And remember that point we made about plants you cannot get B12 from plants. A common myth is that you can get it from fermented foods. Not true. A very specific set of bacteria can produce B12 and there is no guarantee that your idli, dosa, yogurt or kombucha culture will include those species. So there is no way to be sure. So supplements are often required if you're vegan. Some of you might wonder, hey, if this is such a serious thing, how come Indians have survived on low levels of meat consumption over so many centuries? While 70% of the Indian population is culturally meat eating, we still eat very little meat per capita. So there are a couple of explanations for this. One, the Indian vegetarian diet includes a lot of milk products. And in places where people don't consume milk, they consume seafood. And milk, while not being a very rich source, still gives you some amount of B12 over time. Two, another hypothesis is that till very recently, high levels of hygiene and sanitary conditions were not very common in India. So more bacteria all around. And it's possible that our gut microbes included some B12 producing bacteria and we were mostly okay. But now, in a cleaner, more sanitized world, we have a problem. Three, it's also possible that B12 deficiency is simply endemic, meaning it's just common in the Indian population and we have just lived with it. But now we can test for it, fix our diets and take supplements to improve our health. To be clear, fix it with food before considering supplements. So cobalt, a metal that can only be produced when a star undergoes a massive supernova explosion. A metal that is exceedingly rare on the Earth's surface turns out to be central to an enzyme that helps with DNA, fatty acid, and protein synthesis. This enzyme is so hard to produce that all life forms other than plants just decided that eating something that already has it is simpler. And it goes to show 
the complex intricacies of how life and food evolved on earth over billions of years and how even cultural eating habits that are merely two to three thousand years old can also miss some of these much longer term factors. The switch from a hunter-gatherer diet to a diet of grains and legumes likely introduced this deficiency as a common problem in this part of the world. So don't fall for fad diets or blindly accept the superiority of your traditional diet. You can sometimes improve it with a little bit of science. Identifying and fixing B12 deficiency will improve the quality of your life. <laughs>